We now turn to uh, section one to talk through the uh, examples from the three different data sets that we're going to use. On slide five, uh, the combined study is described. So that's a very large study of alcohol use disorder. It's a 16 week multi site randomized double blind clinical trial comparing treatments of alcohol dependence. So it's not a general population sample, but a treatment sample. And the study is described in Anton and others in uh, the Journal of American Medical Association. There are 1,383 individuals, mean age 44, and about 70% males. We have several measurement locations. Baseline, actually, there are pre-baseline measures available as well. Week one, week two, after treatment, week four, every other week, up until uh, week 12, where we go four weeks to week 16. And then we also have a week 52 follow-up, so one year later. We're going to use uh, the eight measures between week one and week 16 mainly. But later on, we're also going to use the week 52 follow-up. We're going to take a look at three dependent variables. The first one is a stress variable, which is a brief version of the so-called proceed stress scale. So this is a continuous variable. And a major outcome is alcohol risk, um, a categorical variable measured as abstinence, low risk, medium risk, high risk, very high risk. And we can then take a look at the heavy drinking variable as well, number of heavy drinking days per week. And we have several covariates. We're going to be mainly interested in the intervention groups, the different um, medication and therapy and placebo groups. But there are also many other background variables. We're going to be particularly interested in the relationship between stress and alcohol use in our bivariate cross lag modeling. And that relationship has been studied uh, in, for instance, Armelie's 2000 article in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology. And a strong relationship has been found. Slide six, you see the distribution of the stress variable, this continuous variable. Uh, this is week one. And it's based on a four item short version of the perceived stress scale, scores ranging from zero to 16. And has been used for analysis previously in the combined data by McHugh and others. Positive affect and stress reactivity in alcohol dependent uh, outpatients. Now this variable, could be treated as a continuous variable using MLR, maximum likelihood with robust standard errors and chi-square. It does have a long right tail, and it does have some uh, piling up at the lowest scores. But the um, percentage at the lowest score of zero does not exceed 15%. So that is a variable that I wouldn't worry too much about as treated treating it as a continuous variable. On slide seven, you have uh, the alcohol risk variable, which is the five category variable I mentioned. And here you have the histogram for uh, one of the time points with 50% at the abstinence category, that is not drinking at all, and then low risk 25% and diminishing a risk, uh, diminishing percentages over the various risk categories a little bit of piling up here at the very high risk. And these categories are based on the World Health Organization and it's derived from uh, grams of pure alcohol consumed per day. So th and that is separate for males and females. Again, in this study, it's almost 70% males. So this is a variable I would say that should not be treated as a continuous variable with linear relationships because of this strong floor effect, 50% at the bottom value. If we treat it as continuous, I think you would end up with biases in correlations and regressions, attenuated correlations and biased regression slopes. Because of, I would, I'm less worried about the number of categories, but mostly because of the strong floor effect at, at zero here. So it's perfectly okay then to treat it as an ordered categorical ordinal polydomous variable with five categories. In that uh, modeling framework, a floor effect is not a problem at all. 
We will also treat this variable as binary, uh, abstinence or not, since that is uh, a traditional um, uh, way of looking at treatment effects. But treatment effects are also of interest in terms of moving people uh, from high risk down to lower risk, if not full abstinence. On slide 8 we see another alcohol variable, the heavy drinking variable. Number of heavy drinking days per week. And so we range, that, those categories range from 0 up to 7, so we have a total of 8 categories. Uh, you should not treat it really as a count variable because you don't have an unlimited number of counts. It's more appropriate to treat it as an ordered categorical ordinal variable. You could look at it as a dichotomous variable, but that would lose quite a lot of information here in the tail. You could think of it as a continuous censored variable, possibly. And that is, it continues, but it's censored at zero point. And you can also treat it as a two-part model, uh, a topic that we're going to talk about uh, later on, uh, towards the end of the uh, this talk. There's a two deals with suicidal ideation and substance uh, abuse and dependence. So those two variables are going to be our two main outcome variables. And uh, we're going to do a cross-flagged panel modeling of, of those two. So that corresponds to the uh, classic question in this field of what influences what. What is cause and what is an effect. And we're going to use data from a preventive intervention study in Baltimore. 737 people so half, half the sample size of uh, data set 1. We're going to have 8 time points once again, and ages are 19 to 26. People are measured once a year. And we have a couple of covariants uh, where um, you also actually have uh, treatment uh, dummy variables. Here you have some references for this study, Haya Longo and others, in the American Journal of Community Psychology. And we have Muschi's article from 2016 and Thrall's article in Addiction 2021. Suicidal ideation and substance abuse, we will treat those variables as binary outcomes. Here you have um, a histogram for the number of instances of these uh, thoughts or this abuse. Uh, at age, this is actually for suicidal ideation. At age 19, 77% are at zero, so no such thoughts. And only 8% are at one. So here you wouldn't lose that much information if you dichotomize it into zero versus higher, which means that you would consider at least one suicidal ideation or behavior endorsed in the last year. We're going to call that variable Y. And at least, or, and for the other variable, at least one substance abuse or dependence criteria. Uh, met across all substances assessed in the last year. And at the bottom here you have the uh, prevalence at the d different ages, Y being suicide and Z being substance. And you see how the uh, proportion is fairly low. Here you have 23% who have at least uh, one such uh, item or uh, event endorsed. 23% being uh, 77, uh, be, being 100 minus 77. Now you have a, a uh, development over ages. You go down, down, and then up, up higher, down, up and down. So it's not a clear trend, but up and down behavior. And even lower prevalence for uh, substance abuse. 19% down to 15, up to 20, down to 18, down to 15, 14, 13. So it's not a clear trend here. And at first we're not going to try to model any trend behavior at all, but leave that unrestricted. The third and last data set has to do with negative affect. We have data from the older cohort of a so-called Notre Dame study of health and well-being, Cindy Bergman study. We're going to work with a sample of 271 people, and it's from an intensive uh, longitudinal data design. Uh, 56 time points, daily measures on consecutive days. We're only going to use 
uh, some of those time points. And uh, in this study, you have 10 different negative affect items, all of them on a five category scale, having to do with feeling afraid, uh, upset, irritable, nervous, etc. Question format, the five category format, is one being not at all, two a little, three moderately, four quite a bit, and five extremely. And here you have the uh, Wang et al. reference for psychological methods article behind this. On slide 12 then you see um, the histogram for negative affect item irritability. So here you have the five categories. Lowest category is uh, not at all. And so they ask today I felt uh, irritable and then they answer no not at all or a little bit etc. And at uh, one of the first time points you have 68% at the lowest value not at all. And again this variable is not suitable for continuous variable analysis due to the strong floor effect 68% but it can be treated as an ordinal variable and that is how we are going to treat it in our analyses.